about verbal speed pumping imbalance? Are there any issues there we should kind of be aware of? What changes it? So let's go to put a verbal speed drive on our system. Now we've done our proportioning balance. We did a circuit set of balance. That means zone three there, as you see, is wide open. Now make sure you don't misunderstand the comment. Circuit set is going to have a little pressure drop through it. But I'm saying to you, zone three circuit setter needs to be wide open. It needs to be wide open. That's the critical thing here. Make sure you got to got to kind of kind of understand that. So we put all this together. Is um, I got a proportion balance. Everything's fine. Let's make it verbal speed. How are you going to control your 1500 GPM with verbal speed? Where do you put the deferential pressure transducer? Normally, I'd put it across the critical circuit. We've already decided that the critical circuit was zone three. Normally, I put it across the circuit setter, the two way valve, and the coil. In this case, I would have my set point for 20 feet. 500 GPM for the coil is 10, 10 for my two way valve. My circuit set, I'm going to assume, is zero for the time being. 20 feet. That means I'm going to run my variable speed pump 1500 GPM even at low flows. The variable flow means variable loads. I'm not going to stay at 1500. I'm going to be moving back and forth as, as I open and close the two with apps. So I'm going to make sure I got 20 feet available across zone three always. If 20 feet is always available across zone three, then when somebody comes into the room, takes a T stat on the wall, and opens a two way valve on zone three wide open, they got full cooling available right now. Then I'll have to wait. I need 20 feet to control head, 20 feet is a minimum head that my pump's got to put out always to make sure zone three is ready to go whenever somebody comes in and opens that valve. So that's the concept. What happens with this when we kind of move around? What happens if the flow in zone three is zero? I did a proportioning balance. Go look at zone two. I need 15 for the coil, 10 is what, 25, and I need three feet. That would be what, help me out a little bit. That'd be 25, 28 feet across zone two to make it be able to flow 500 GPM. So you always want to be able to flow instantly whatever the need of the, of the system may be. It may not be 500, but if you need 500, you've got to be able to flow it. That kind of becomes your control point. That's your minimum control here you got to have available. So the question becomes, what happens to the deferential pressure across zone two that needs 28 feet to flow 500 GPM if zone three has no flow set for 20 feet? What happens to the deferential pressure across zone two as you verbal speed drive as you start slowing the pump down? Let's go to zone three. Zone three is set for 20 feet. But if there's no flow, then the four feet on the supply side of zone three and the four feet on the return side of zone three go to what? They go to zero. There's no head. There's no flow. So your 20 feet deferential, there's no flow through zone three, backs down to zone two. And now I only have 20 feet of deferential across zone two. And you need how much? 25, 28 feet. You're in trouble. You got your pump set to give you 20 feet of drop cross the cross there always, and you need 28 for full flow. You cannot satisfy the load. Now you might get away with it, but you might have a problem. So the issue is kind of deep. Comment is you might need a little different different manual balancing for variable speed systems on direct return. You might need to look at where your deferential pressure control points are, or you might need to do a different kind of a balance. One solution to this would be you put a deferential pressure transducer on every zone. And we see people doing that. We you know this is the case. You use three deferential pressure transducers to the pump, and then one throws some set point takes over and controls. Everybody's happy. It costs more money. That's okay. And we see that done a lot. It's a good reason here to use multiple sensors. Let's take a look at another way to do that would be with balance. So let's do a little modified balance and see what happens. I turn the system on again. I think you see that zone one's in zone two. And if zone three has no flow and you got zero pressure drop across the supply return piping to zone three, I wind up with 20 feet across zone two and we're not going to have design flow. What are some things we could do maybe to fix that? We could do an alternate balancing concept on variable speed, variable flow balancing with circuit setters. We could come along and say, let's ignore 
the four feet on the supply side and the four feet on the return side. Let's just balance each circuit against each other. In other words, let's take zone one and make the total pressure drop across zone one 25 feet. Let's go to zone two. Let's make the total pressure drop just across that zone 25 feet. Let's go to zone three. Let's just make the total pressure drop across zone three 25 feet. And what we did was just ignored the four foot pressure drop segments. If you do that and you set your deferential pressure transducer control up from 20 to 25 feet, all of a sudden now you've got a modified balance that would assure you no matter what the flow, every zone has 25 feet across it and 25 feet across zone 2 or 25 feet across zone 1 will give you the full required flow of 500 GPM. Another way of getting there and your smart balancing people understand this it's a tricky way to do things, but it works. Not a bad idea. Let's take a little bit more happens to what happens at zone three at zero flow. And as you can see, zone three at zero flow with a five feet, I'm okay. All the flows get there. So you kind of got the idea how the 25 foot would work, and you see how an alternate balancing example takes care of the verbal speed issue. Let's just see what happens when we go a little bit further with this and we start morning startups and back up. What happens to zone three? Kind of mentioned to you before, if you've got this night nice setback thing and you're going at it, that when you get out of control, the two-way valve, this case zone one, it's going to grab all the flow it can. So if I did the alternate balance thing, that's fine, but what's going to happen to you is zone one is going to grab more than 500 GPM because it's going to be more deferential pressure available to it than 25 feet. You're going to have max deferential 35 or 40 feet across it. And on startup, that two-way valve on zone one is going to be grabbing everything it can, and it's going to overflow. Zone three is going to get less flow. So one problem with this alternate balancing procedure is if you're doing night nice setbacks, it's going to make it worse. It's going to make zone one grab more flow coming up online and zone three is going to suffer until the two-way valves start modulating, until the two-way valves take control. When the two-way valve is wide open, it's going to try to grab all the water it can get its hands on. So maybe one possibility would be go back to our flow limbers, go back to our automatic balancing valves or whatever you like to call them. Let's go back and look at that. What would happen if I put them on verbal speed? Here's a situation that I went back to my original this has been proportioning balance. As you can see, I've got five feet of drop through zone three's flow limber, my automatic balancing devices. I got five feet. Minimum required to make this spring works two pounds of five feet. So now my pressure drops what 10, 10, and 5. And I'm going to set my deferential pressure transducer, let's say, on 30 feet. You might even set it a little bit tighter, but let's set it on 30 because why? Now I've got the ability to flow. What does that mean? A little tricky again, but go to zone two. I've got eight feet of pressure drop there under full flow. What is the minimum pressure drop across my flow limiter on zone two that I need to make it work? Five. So what's the worst situation for my deferential pressure transducer? Fifteen, I'm zone two. Fifteen plus ten plus five is thirty feet. So if zone three has no flow, if I up the deferential set point from twenty-five to thirty feet on zone three, I've got 30 feet available for zone two at a low flow condition. Everybody's happy. In other words, as a procedure with flow limiters, automatic balancing devices that I can set up, that I can have it self balancing out of the box, and I can trim the impeller down to my five feet on my critical circuit, and I can make it have the right flow to each zone. What's nice about a flow limiter, remember, is if the max flow to that zone is 500 GPM, it will not let it go past 500 GPM. So a night setback or warm us back and forth, they will restrict the zone to the full flow allowed across it. It will not go to six or 700 GPM. It's going to stop at five. With a two-way valve and a manual balance, it can go beyond five. So this makes a little bit of sense in this particular situation with night setback. What happens if zone three has zero load? Then I'm okay. I can flow the 500 GPM required. And design flow goes the zones one and zone two as we just described. We can get our design flow.